once you are ready to face Araxor, you'll need to go into the web entrance. You'll either need an Araxite Pheromone in your inventory, or to create an instance to get the favorable spawn. Once inside, you want to make sure to activate your Aura, activate your Scrimshaw, drink your Overload, Prayer Renewal, and your Anti-Poison Potion, and go ahead and burn the Spider Minion web. Once the web has been burned and the fight has started, you want to use Anticipation. This is to avoid an early cleave, or to avoid getting hit with an early web cocoon. You want to make sure that you're alternating between Anticipation and Freedom after every two auto attacks to avoid being stuck in the web cocoon or getting pulled in for a cleave. Make sure that you're using your bleeds, such as Corruption Shot as well as Fragmentation Shot, to wear Raxor's health down. You also want to make sure that you are using your Threshold abilities, Snapshot, as well as Rapid Fire, but you only want to use Rapid Fire while under the protection of Freedom or under the protection of Anticipation. Once you have reached your ultimate ability level, you want to go ahead and swap to the Ring of Vigor if you have it. Once you do that, you want to go ahead and use it and then swap back. If you are using a Shield, once you have a Death Swiftness up, you want to use Revenge, that way you can ensure that you're dealing as much damage as possible while it's up and you are taking damage. Once you've got Araxor's health low enough, go on to the next area. Once again, once you are ready to face off against Araxor, go ahead and enter the webbed entrance. Make sure to have the Araxite Pheromone or an instance ready to get the favorable spawn. Drink your potions, activate your aura and your scrimshaw, and go ahead and start the fight. Again, you want to lead off with using either Anticipation or with freedom to avoid being pulled in by a cleave or getting hit with a web cocoon. Remember to also alternate between your basic abilities and your bleeds, and always use your thresholds once they are available. You also want to make sure that you are working up to the ultimate ability, Death Swiftness. Once that's been used, remember to drink your adrenaline potion to gain back 25% of your adrenaline. Then, you want to use your shield if you brought it with you to also use revenge. That way you can stack some extra damage as you are taking damage and hits from Araxor. Again, this pretty much just repeats itself from the first part of the guide. Remember, once Araxor's health is low enough, you want to get it down to about 5,000, around the 1,000-ish mark. And once you have done that, you're going to go ahead and move on to Phase 2. Phase 2 for the Spider Minion path is fairly simple. Araxor now gains the ability to spawn 5 minion spiders. So he'll spawn 4 random regular spiders and 1 special spider. This will either be the Pulsing Spider or the Mirrorback Spider. This phase is going to go the same as Path 1, with you alternating between basic abilities, dealing as much damage to Araxor as possible, using your thresholds, getting all the way up to your ultimate ability, Death Swiftness using that, using revenge, and dealing damage. What you also will need to do is kill all the little spiders, the imbued, the bladed, the spitting, the pulsing, or the mirrorback spiders when they spawn. You want to have all these dead before the end of the phase. Once you have killed all the spiders, at that point it's pure DPS, getting Araxor's health down, and then running through the tunnel to start the next phase. It's not too difficult, however, you also still need to watch out for Araxor's other special abilities, such as his web shield, the Exax spawn, the cleave, as well as his web shield. You need to watch out for all of these things, but above all else, make sure that you stay calm and stay focused. That way you don't get cleaved or end up getting yourself killed, because nobody wants that. So once you have weakened Araxor down enough and you've gotten all of the spider minions dead, you can then move on to the next area. Phase 2 for the Darkness Path is a very simple phase. The entire tunnel that you're going into is going to be completely dark. 
the only chance you have to stop any continual damage from stacking up on you is to stand in the light beams. While doing this, you also need to prayer switch between Araxor's incoming attacks. At this time, Araxor will also spawn egg sacs. You need to lure the fireballs into these egg sacs in order to destroy them. As stated, you need to make sure that you're staying inside the light beams. You need to make sure that you're prayer switching to prevent the attacks from hitting you for too much damage, and you also need to destroy the egg sacs. At a random time, and it's usually after three light beams, it will give you a message saying that Araxor is coming down from the ceiling. If the spider happens to put its legs to the left, you need to go to the left. If he puts his legs to the right, you need to move to the right. If his legs are crossed in front of them, you need to go up. If he has his legs up in the air, you need to go down. This way, you will deal full damage to the wall that is blocking you from going to phase 3, and you won't have to add an extra phase or waste any extra time or resources in the tunnel. Once you have completed either 2, 3, or 4 of these little quick instances where you have to make a decision moving left, right, up, or down, you will then be able to move on to the next area. From here, you'll be able to move to phase 3, and you'll be able to pretty much take on the spider minions that you didn't kill in the first part. Phase 3 of the spider minion path is by far one of the easiest phases in the entirety of the Iraxor kill. From here, it's pretty much just pure DPS. You really have nothing to look out for, except for the light beams that are coming down. Since you did not go to path 3, you will now have to deal with the darkness in this phase. It's pretty much, as I stated, pure DPS. Remember to rotate between your basics, remember to use your thresholds, watch out for the cleaves, make sure you're using anticipation and freedom to keep from getting dragged in, make sure that you are using death swiftness while you have your ring of beggar equipped. If you brought a shield, make sure that once you hit 50% adrenaline after you are in death swiftness, to go ahead and pop your shield on, use revenge, then until your revenge goes away, deal DPS damage to Araxor. This will get you through this phase very quickly as long as you have revenge up and a death swiftness up. Once that has been taken care of and your revenge is gone, remember to switch back to dual wielding and make sure that you are dealing as much damage to Araxor as possible. Again, as long as you are dealing enough DPS, you won't waste as many resources getting to the next phase. Another important ability to make sure that you're using, especially when you go to high and rage kills, is you either want to use Devotion, and then once Devotion has worn off, you need to use Debilitate. This will constantly give you a point where you're not being dealt as much damage, which in turn saves you resources and allows you to last longer in the kill should something happen to go wrong, should he happen to use too many web shields, or should you become close to death and you need a little bit more health to get you through the kill. But once you defeat Araxor in this phase, you'll move on to Araxi. For phase 3 of the Darkness Path, you will now have to deal with the Spider Minions as well as Araxor. This phase is purely DPS minus the Spider Minions. Again, you will want to make sure that once the Spider Minions have spawned, that you kill either the Mirror Back Spider or the Pulsing Spider. The other four random spiders that spawn aren't nearly as important as those two. If you can get them close together, you can use Ricochet, Bombardment, or Corruption Shot, and this usually takes them out for you. You want to focus as much attention on Araxor as possible, while also taking care of the spider minions. Remember that any health that you have left over from Phase 1, you will have to deal a percentage more of this damage, as Araxor will now heal that back. So, pretty much as stated, the phase is purely DPS. You need to focus on the spider minions, taking down Araxor, while also watching out for his special abilities. Now, the spider minions, whenever they spawn, they are a special attack as well, so this will take place of one other special attack. You want this attack to occur as much as possible, that way you can deal with all the spider minions, and then focus your efforts on Araxor. Remember that you also have to focus on the Darkness ability and the Egg Sac spawns. Remember if the Egg Sac spawn happens, you need to move over to the Egg Sac to keep from taking 3000 damage from Araxor. 
If you don't get to it in time, then you will have to deal with three more spider minions. You will want to take care of these before moving on to Araxi. If not, she's going to go ahead and spawn them anyway. So, again, maintain DPS. If you have the ability to Devotion, use it as much as possible. If you feel that you're taking too much damage and Devotion is not available, you can go ahead and use Debilitate. If you brought a shield with you, you can also use Reflect, and this will save you a little bit of life point damage. This can also be used in situations where you have a lot of the minions left up. You can Reflect, and as they attack you, they will reflect a small amount of damage back. So if you're using your shield abilities, and you also happen to hit Corruption Shot, Ricochet, or Bombardment during this time, that will help you take out the minions. So, again, just to reiterate the phase, kill the spider minions, deal as much damage per second to Araxor as possible, remember to prioritize the Mirrorback spiders and the Pulsing spiders over the regular spiders, try to get a few pop shots in on the regular spiders while Araxor is under a web shield. If you do all these things, you will then be able to make it to the fourth and final phase. Once you have defeated Araxor, he will then carry you to phase four. During the cutscene, spam click your minimap to free yourself from it. Once you are free from the cutscene, use an ability such as Surge or Freedom to stall your adrenaline. Go ahead and get ready, pot up, and prepare for Araxi. Once the Araxi is spawned, you will then want to use Anticipation. This will prevent you from getting pulled in by an early cleave or getting stuck in a web cocoon. From here, the fight is purely DPS, while also managing her special attacks. You also want to maintain your prayer switching to keep you from taking as much damage and wasting as many resources as possible. Remember to use your thresholds and your ultimate ability death swiftness once it becomes available. Once Araxi reaches 50,000 life points, she will then stop using her special attacks. From here, you want to maintain using abilities such as Devotion. Once Devotion is not up and it's stopped being active, you then want to use Debilitate to reduce the damage. Again, after three auto attacks, make sure that you have Freedom or Anticipation up. This will prevent you from being pulled in by a cleave. Most people panic whenever Araxi reaches 25,000 life points and she has spawned the Acidic Core. You don't want to panic you want to focus on DPS as well as your prayer switching. Once the acidic core bounces three times, it will land on you and it will deal you a typeless hit. Once you take this typeless hit, you want to move two squares away from wherever it hits you at. Again, maintain your prayer switching and after you take that first wave of damage, as long as you've maintained your DPS, as long as you're using your thresholds, and as long as you maintain your prayer switching, you will defeat it Araxium. Congratulations, and good luck on your loot. Alright guys, so that was my ranged Araxor guide for paths 1 and 3. If you liked the video, go ahead and click that like button. If you want to see more videos from me, click that subscribe button. And if you have any suggestions for videos such as guides or skill guides in the future, make sure you leave those suggestions in the comment section below. If you have any questions, leave those in the comment section as well, and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Peace.